Hello everyone, this is Ashish from FinSuite. In this video, we are going to check out a very powerful alternative to Zapier, which is Make. And previously, they were known as Integromat. We are going to create a few automations with Webflow and we are also going to see some of the very basics of the Make. So without further delay, let's dive right into the video. That's sweet. Yeah, first let's start with the basic comparison. I'm not going to dive deeper into the comparison. Like you might be thinking why Make is a better platform. So here is the Make uh, dashboard. In, yeah, just to show you what platform looks like. So here is uh, Make, which is make.com. And the basic differences here uh, with Zapier, there are many differences. And uh, uh, we have a article by Make itself where they are comparing Zapier and Make. So you can also read that article. but I'm going to tell you the, you know, the main points I think that are really good about Make itself. So the very first point I think where Make is much better than Zapier is the visual builder. So Make itself is having a visual builder to build automations. So right now on the screen, if you can see, uh, we have the scenario, which says all scenarios. So just like in Zapier, uh, it is called Zaps, the automations. Here it is called scenarios. So I can simply click on new, create new scenario. And from here, I can start creating the automation. So the first plus point that uh, make gets here compared to Zapier is the visual builder. Here you can see, I can just click on uh, this module. This is called a module. Each application, this circular thing you are seeing is a module. When I click on it, I can simply add my apps here, for example, Webflow. And then I have all the API endpoints, which is available in Webflow. So for example, I can watch for form submissions, uh, e-commerce orders, everything basically that is possible with Webflow e-commerce, uh, sorry, Webflow API. And if I click on watch events, so this is the module itself. And now you can see when I, when I want to automate this, uh, this thing, I will simply click on plus and I will add another thing, for example, Airtable. So for example, uh, once a form is submitted in Webflow, I want it to go to Airtable. So you can see that I am actually visually building the automation. So that is a uh, first plus point of the make, which I like a lot. So here you can see I have the automation and you can move the things around. So sometimes you have paths and routers. So it's also very like visually look, you know, it looks very nice. And for you, it's very easy to manage it. So for example, I can add a router here. So in Zapier, they are called paths. Here it is router and you, you know, here you can create unlimited routers. There is no limit to that. So for example, I can click on router and I can add multiple routes and you can see that I can visually see the automation itself. So again, uh, I think one of the biggest plus point of using make here is this visual builder here. Uh, I think the second plus point that makes get over Zapier is the error handling part. Uh, make provides you which, uh, with a lot of advanced error handlers. So I can simply, for example, click on here. And if I click on add error handlers, you can see there are uh, multiple error handler types here. Ignore, commit, resume, break, rollback. Uh, you can uh, read more about these error handlers, but some of them are like some of the most popular one that I personally use are, is ignore, which basically if there is an error and you want to ignore the error for some reason, you can ignore it. And uh, the commit is, commit is the error handler where, you know, if there is an error, it will not stop the automation, but it will mark this as a success. Same, we have break. Break is uh, also one of my favorites where, you know, when there is an error, you can actually set interval times. So for example, I can click on break and I can set number of attempts. It will try and in interval of time, like 15 minutes. So after 15 minutes, it will retry the automation. There are many tools which takes some times to kind of generate the required result. For example, I'm using a AI image generator, right? So once I make an API call to, for example, let's say, uh, DALI, right? It's taking maybe 10 seconds to generate it. And before 10 seconds, I made a request to get the image. And for some reason, it's not generated. So I can make another request maybe in like one minute after one minute again, right? So in those cases, we can use this particular error handler. There are uh, other things, uh, other, other error handlers as well. And with combinations of filters and all, you can make it super advanced. Uh, yeah, by the way, there are filters as well. So in between all the automations, you can simply click on this, add filters and everything. So yeah, that is the basic of this thing, uh, the plus point here. Now, I also think the user experience itself is better. I feel that Zapier user experience it is a bit laggy or choppy, I would say. You know, you are clicking things, things are jumping a lot. 
uh, you know, when you are navigating throughout the dashboard in Zapier. So I think that is also a plus point here. You get a much smoother experience when using Make. Uh, yep. And the fourth point that I have here is the native endpoints that you get here. So just for example, I created a, a Webflow module here. So let's simply go back and I can discard the changes. I will simply create a new scenario to show it to you. So let's take an example of let's take example of Notion this time. So Notion, I can type here Notion, and you can see that I have bunch of options here from their own API documentation. So this is one of the plus points when using Make the native endpoints that you get here, the, all the options that you are seeing here for database page content. This is much better compared to Zapier. You get a lot of native options uh, plus when you know you have an application that is not supported in make you can always make a http request and basically you can use any application that supports api and if they have their own api system right so you can use the http module to connect with it and use it uh, for example i recently used it for slack uh, and slack is having their own api uh, and and make supports slack natively as well so you can use that and also you can make http request for a specific API calls, which is not natively supported sometimes. Yeah, so this is Slack and yeah, all the popular platforms are supported. Sometimes when you don't have the platform, you can always make HTTP request. The plus point that Zapier gets here is that it supports larger number of applications, like all the new startups, all the new tools that you will find on internet will uh, first prioritize Zapier as their partner or automation partner. But make, make is I think much better. I generally, what I generally do is, I use their API documentation and create a make custom HTTP request in those cases because the experience overall is much better in make. Uh, yeah. I think uh, the one, the last point that I would say here is about going to be about pricing. Pricing is much better in make. It's much more affordable and uh, uh, it's based on operations. Again, uh, it's called tasks on uh, Zapier. Here it's called operations. So. Uh, overall, it's much better. The operation counting system they have in Make is also much better compared to Zapier. So yeah, so these are the plus points. Pricing is also amazing here. So if I, for example, let's see, if I go to organization, discard, discard the changes. Let's go to organizations, subscription. And here you can see the plans. Uh, it's cheaper than Zapier, you can see. Yeah, uh, and uh, one more plus point I would think I will add here are the inbuilt tools that you find uh, you, that you get with Make. So, for example, I'm creating a new scenario here. So, you get a lot of tools here, right here. You have iterator, array aggregator. So, you can find detailed descriptions of this, but these tools are really powerful. Let's say we have a Webflow Ecom order, and inside that we have ten orders placed in one go, right? So, what this particular option will allow us to do, this one, uh, which is iterator, it will split up all the orders and create. 10 items inside a table. So just, just for an example, this is just an example use case, but you get a lot of uh, inbuilt tools that you can use. You get tools for, uh, you know, formatting your text, setting variables, getting variables. There is an increment function, which we are going to use in this video, uh, in this session today. Then we have text related tools as well. So there is a lot of inbuilt functionality right here. Let's now dive right into and create a scenario. So I will start from scratch again here. So the first scenario that we are going to create is going to be the very basic one where we have a form inside Webflow and we are going to send that submission to Airtable. There we go. I have created a base called make demo. There we go. Let's rename this table to form submissions. You know, delete this field. We are going to delete all the unnecessary fields and create a new field let's call it email and one for the message so text let's create a long text field there we go message create field so now we have the three fields that is in the form i have just cloned a simple template here nothing uh you know crazy going on so let's publish this thing just in case. Nice. 
So let's create our first scenario. So simply I will click on create a new scenario. And by the way, all the connections that you will that we are going to make are going to appear in, appear here. So webhooks, connections, connections is by the way, applications. You can see the Airtable and Webflow account and Stripe account, all the things are connected right here. So yeah, that is that. So let's go to scenario. And from here, I'm going to create a new scenario just like this. Let's name it form submission. There we go. And I will click on plus in the first module. From here, I can select Webflow. I'm going to use Webflow's webhook right now to uh, create this automation. Let's click on watch events. We are going to watch events for the form submission and all. And I will click on create a webhook. Once I do that, I can see uh, I have connected my Webflow account. You can click on add and basically authorize your Webflow account itself. And I can select the site itself. And then I can also select the trigger type. So you can see that I get a, I get a lot of trigger types here. I think it's uh, more than what we get in Zapier by default. So we are going to go with form submission. And let's call it contact form submission. By the way, we should always always name webhook to very specific what we are using that webhook for. So this is for contact form submission. There we go. And I will save it. There we go. The webhook is created. Here, what you can do, you can simply click right, right click on it. And you will see some bunch of options, which is for troubleshooting and basically tr uh, testing the, your scenario. So here I can, what I can do is I can click on run this module only, which will run this particular module, not the one after it's and before it. And I can also click run once, which will run the whole scenario once. So right now you can see that it's, uh, sorry, it's loading, which means that it is watching for events. It is waiting for the Webflow forms to be submitted. So I can go to the live website and let's open that contact page. There we go. So I will simply type here Harshit, test at the rate harshit.com, then test message. There we go. Submit. Webhook not found. Okay. I think I have made a, a small mistake here. I think I have this method so let's remove this and make this by default you know how default webflow form looks like so by default we don't have any action url and the method is set to get so this will send the form submissions to webflow server now it is published let's see again now i will try to make the submission oh shit there we go test at the .com. test Submit this thing. It is submitted. Uh, form is submitted. And here you can see uh, it is arrived. It has arrived. So you can see that the name, which means the form name itself, you can see the site ID is also here. And then we, here we have the data itself. I also think this visual rep representation is much better than Zapier. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, like, I just love make a lot. So yeah. So here you can see the form name and the data itself. And now I can use the data and transfer it to somewhere else. Let's go to Airtable. And let's add a table in there. A table, there we go. Now here I can select a create a record just like this. Then same goes here as well. I need to connect my a table account, which I have already connected to save some time. Then I can select the base, which is make demo. And then I can select the table, which is form submission. Here uh, I can basically map the fields right away. So here uh, you can see the data is coming uh, in this small dialog box and I can see the data name is here. So I simply have to click on name, that's it. Then I will click on email, select email, click on message and select message. You can see that it is saying field. So this might be happening because we have not named our message field. So let's go back to Webflow and see, see you can see that the name of the message field is called field. So let's just simply rename it. And now this issue will be fixed. Now, in order to have this thing refreshed here, I need to test it, test the run again, because right now, you know, it's the make is not updated with the latest field name. So let's simply go back and uh, publish the website, refresh the website, and we will make a test submission again. So in order to do that again, I will simply click on run this module only. Again, it's waiting for the event. So let's just submit anything for now here. There we go. Test and submit. There we go. It has arrived. And now let's go to 
here table and uh, I need to refresh it. Let's see. Let's see this uh, data that we have. Okay, there we go. Now you can see that message is here. So now it should work fine. If it don't work, we can simply, okay, there we, it should work fine. Let's see. Select the base, select the table and name, email, message. As simple as that. And then I will click on OK to save it. There we go. So now the automation is created. And in order to test it, again, I can simply click on, uh, first I need to save it if you want to save it. Otherwise, you just want to test what you have just built. Don't save it, just click on run once, okay? To save progresses, you have to click on this save icon right here. So run once. And now let's refresh the page and see how it arrives. Test, some look. So here is our automation. So simply we can just go to our air table and you can see that uh, our submission has arrived. Now let's let's go further and do new things here. So this is all good and I can simply now save the progress and I can also turn on the automation, turn on the scenario. Now every time I make a submission, it will work fine. So let's just try again. Now I'm not doing any test runs here. I'm just simply going to submit it. So let's do that. Hershit test at the rate hershit.com. Submit this thing. The submission has been made. Nice. Let's go to Airtable and you can see the submission has arrived. Uh, yeah. So that was the basic setup we have. We are going to make a few more automations. So yeah, let's let's dive right into it. So so the next automation that we have is going to be using API uh, and endpoint URL. We are going to use action URL here uh, in the form itself instead of using Webflow form submissions. So currently what we were doing is we are using Webflow form submissions. So there is a limit to the Webflow form submissions, right? I think you get around 2500 or uh, yeah, 2500 or maybe 10,000 limits. I'm not sure about the latest limit, but there is a limit to Webflow form submissions. So what you can do is you can use, you can either use the attributes form submit, which we discussed in the last session with me. You can use that or we can, uh, make fetch a fetch api calls if you want something in uh, in response you know if you want to go super advanced you can also go make like custom javascript fetch api request or you can use ajax method uh, for jquery ajax method for form submissions or you can simply use form submit by from attribute solutions yeah so in this video uh, we are going to use the ajax method there is a reason for that because we also want to listen for responses with attributes form submit, you are also making a one-way submissions. But in this video, I want to show a really nice use case of using make. That's why we are going to use Ajax form submissions. So here I have a very basic code which I generated using chat GPT. Uh, this is submitting, making submissions using Ajax method. It's a jQuery uh, form submission method. So the basic setup is basically, I am basically defining this is my form. If you see the code. I am defining this using an attribute. So I will simply copy this attribute and add it to my form. Let's add it to the form. This is the form element itself. So I just need to add the attribute. I'm not adding any value in here. This is just for the selector. And um, then let's see rest of the code. I am also defining uh, the, the submit button. Like this is my submit button. I'm also designing the uh, de defining action URL. I'm taking this from right here. So we, are, we don't have to define anything in the code to make it easy. We are just going to use Webflow itself. Then I'm also ha having method here. I also defined the success uh, button, uh, success wrapper itself. So the success element. So once the form is submitted, it will show the Webflow's native success message. And then we also have the error. That's it. And then we are uh, formatting some of the data to make it compatible. And then here we have the submission itself. You don't have to understand all the code now, but it's super simple. We are basically hiding and showing elements. Once the form is submitted, we are also listening for responses, which we are going to come to in make now. Okay. So one of the powers of make that I really like is, so now because we are, uh, I'm, I'm going to come to that. So now we are going to shift from Webflow form submissions to custom form submissions, custom, you know, HTML form submissions. 
for that we will delete the first module and we are going to use webhooks now so there is a module in uh, make which is called webhooks and this is their native uh, module okay just like in zapier we have webhooks here it's i think it's much better webhook is much better so you get option for custom mailhook uh, webhook and then webhook response this is something we are going to use and i love using it so i will click on custom webhook here and i'm going to click on create a new webhook once I create a new webhook, I'm going to name it contact form submission. So this method will also allow us to skip all the Webflow form limits. And basically we are going to directly submit our forms to Airtable. Webflow form submit or maybe submission. Yeah, this is much better. And then I will simply click on save. Once I do that, it will generate a endpoint URL for me or the webhook URL for me. I can simply copy this URL and add it to the action URL of my page. Let's close this thing for now. And I will simply add this right here. There we go, in action. I will set the method to post. Once I do that, I can click on publish the website. Let's see, uh, it is published. And so we are going to again run this module only because we don't want to send the data to a table yet we have to configure the data right and if i click on it now you can see that the fields have been blacked out with because the field doesn't exist anymore so let's simply remove these things and click on okay uh now i will simply click on run this module only okay there is some error let's see oh i have not selected any webhook now it should be fine mm, there we go okay now it is listening for the data let's go to the website press it just to make sure now I'm going to make a submission. Once I submit this, you can see that it looks like Webflow has submitted the data, but no, we are using a custom webhook here. So here we go. Uh, we have the data arrived and you can see it, it has come in a bundle. So we have the name, email because I left, I left it. So it's empty and then we have message. So same goes here as well. Now we need to simply link it. So I will open the Airtable module and I will link all the fields. There we go. There we go. Message, message, message. Click OK and click Save. Now, uh, because I have saved the automation, it is already on. It should be working right away. I'm using your name home query here. Submit. And the data should come here. There we go. It's working perfectly nice, uh, perfectly fine. Now let's go a step ahead and uh, use something uh, that is also a power of make here, which is using webhook responses. So what we can do with uh, uh, make is we can also send back responses to the website when once we make the call. We can send a response back and display the data on our live website based on the response. So I will again click on webhook uh, module and I will click on webhook response. So what this will allow us to do, it, this will allow us to uh, send something back to the website and we, then we can use that back in the uh, live website for the, uh, for the user. For example, their name, their ID or something, right? So I'm going to make a custom message here. Uh, let's, let's create one message, thank you. Thank you and the name. So it will say thank you and then a comma. Let's say your ID is your ID is and I'm going to forward their uh, Airtable ID. So for example, this is not this might not be the exact use case, but you can consider this thing for an example. So you can you can see that I am sending a web webhook response. The status is 200. There are uh, multiple values for the status for different type of uh, you know status like error. For error, there is a different number. Uh, and there is a list which which I will also attach, uh, you know, uh, in the Notion document we will share, or in the recorded session you can find different quotes. I will make sure to attach it. So here is the body itself, and I will simply click on OK. Your ID is there. We go, and in the code, I am going to simply unblock a line which I have commented right here. So there we go. So what this particular line does, it, it sets the text of the success message to the response message that we get from make. Okay. 
I will sim simply click on save and I will go and publish the website as simple as that. Let's also save this scenario just in case uh, it is already fine. Now let's refresh the page. Now let's make a submission. So Gloria. Best message. There we go. Submit it. So there we go. You can see that it says, Thank you, Victoria. Your ID is this number. There we go. And if I go here, uh, you can see that it's not appearing right here because the scenario is live. Let's save the changes and uh, go back. And we can go to history to see all the runs. And we can even see it visually. That, that is part is uh, also amazing. So here on the right side, you can see history or you can simply click on history. That is also fine. You can see that duration is less than a second. So it was super quick. And uh, I can click on details right here. And now I can visually see it, what really happened. If there was an error, it will also show me visually. So you can really, you know, find where error happened and it will also describe the error if there is any error. But this works all fine. Everything is in green. So everything is good. And here you can see that the body was, thank you, Victoria, your ID is this number. So yeah, this is what webhook response is used for. You can use it for a lot of things. For example, you have different routers, so you can have one response in one router, a second response in second router. Uh, yeah, multiple possibilities again. So that was the first automation. You can add error handler that would send the error message as a webhook response as well. For example, let's let's see. Let's why not? Let's see example here. So I will simply go to the diagram again. I will click on diagram, and there we go. Let's add a router. Okay, where is the router? There you go. Oops, I think I can connect it. I messed it up. You can click on this auto align button so you can basically see it, how things are. Uh, so one router is like this and let's add another router for another response. By the way, you when you mess things up, simply click on this auto align button. It's a magic button, simply click on it and things will be aligned for you. Uh, I'm going to add two routers here. One will be the basic response. Let's check if the email field is submitted or not. So another response right here. Success, uh, thank you. Okay, name, email field is missing. <laughs> Just a random response here. Now let's see, we are going to use filters for this. So in response, I'm going to check, set up a filter. I will call if email is present. There we go. Let's add a condition. So if email is exist, if email exists, then it will go to this route. There we go. Let's add another filter. Email is absent. Condition if email is not present, does not exist. And uh, you have a lot of conditions to use. So, yeah, it's powerful again. Okay. okay. A status is 200, which means success. And in the code, we have we are also checking uh, the 200 status here. So, yeah, 200. I think it's for okay, not success. Yeah, there is a list of the codes. Uh, nice. So we have two responses. The status is 200, and then body is thank you. Email is field is missing. Now, now let's save it. And this time, what we will do, we will not fill the email field. And then we will see the response. Yes. Yes. Oh, we are going to not look here email. There we go. Let's see now. Okay, there we go. Thank you. Test email field is missing. So it worked perfectly fine. Now let's save the changes and see the history again, just to make sure everything is good. And there we go. So it goes to this path, and you can see here it says one, which means it was able to fulfill the uh, condition. And here it sent this response. So yeah, this is the use case for, I think, uh, the filters and also sending different types of response based on what is selected on the website. Okay, guys, let's move to the another automation. So I was thinking to show automation uh, of using Stripe and it's again a very nice platform. Yeah, so the idea was that I, we recently did this automation for uh, one of our client. 
So they had a product inside Stripe. So this is the product I have just created it. Uh, I have created a CMS basically where I have added digital product and I called it Webflow Pro. And what they wanted their requirement was that they want to show a live counter like you are the 100th person in the queue purchasing this product or you are the 50th person, you know, you, they wanted a live counter in there. So make supports a feature that will allow us to do this. So you can see that I have basically an embed inside which I have added a text block of it's a div block. I simply created it in Webflow and then copied the HTML from it. And I have connected this field to the live counter field of CMS. Then, uh, uh, yeah, uh, this is how it looks, the main setup. And then we have the, this is by the way, collection list. So you can see the structure here, collection list inside which we have collection item inside that we have all the things that we need. Uh, because it was only one product, I have not really linked all the things to the CMS. Right now it's all static. I only, I'm only using Webflow CMS because of the reason I can access Webflow CMS API using make and update values there. So that is the only reason why I'm using CMS here. Uh, I could have also used some JavaScript to fetch maybe some metadata from Stripe uh, and do it. But I think for Webflow developers, this would be uh, more, I think friendly. That's why I'm using Webflow CMS right here. Yeah, so this is the button itself. So let's let's simply go here and go to products. By the way, this is right now, I am in test mode in Stripe. This is the product that I have created and I'm going to create a payment link. So if you are not familiar with a Stripe payment link, they are super powerful. You can create products and then payment links out of it, which is a single link. You, you can use it, share it with everyone, you know, basically like Shopify buy buttons. They are simply buy buttons of your product. So this is the product itself. Uh, we are not going to add anything. Let's keep it plain and click on create link. So that link should be created. There we go. I can copy the link. And now I will simply go to my uh, website and I will add this link to the pre-order button itself. There we go. I can select open in new tab. It doesn't matter. Yeah, let's do that. Let's publish it to the live website. There we go and open it. When I click on three order, it should take me to the Stripe checkout page. There we go, as simple as that. This is what Stripe payment links does. So as soon as we open the Stripe payment link, a checkout session is created in the you know background. So what we can do, we are going to use Stripe webhooks to detect events. So once a checkout is completed, we are going to detect uh, the checkout completed using webhook and then we are going to increase uh, the number by one inside Webflow CMS. That is what we are going to do here. Uh, yeah, so let's simply, we will keep it, uh, it as it is for now. Let's go to uh, our make account right here. Uh, I will simply save it and go back. By the way, one more thing, I just forgot to mention it. I'm going to mention it right now. You might be thinking that uh, so in this method, you can see that I have added this uh, URL to one form only, but when using Webflow, Webflow's native uh, form submission, webhook form submissions, you can, there is, you know, no way directly to select the form where the submission is coming from. So what you can basically do is add a filter where you can set up a filter where uh, you can set up, you know, if the form name is, let's say contact, then go ahead and process the automation. So that would be the way to kind of differentiate between different form submissions and their automations. Yeah, just a small pointer here. So let's continue again. I will simply click save changes and uh, create a new one. Create a new scenario. Let's call it a Stripe checkout counter. And then I am going to again use the webhook methods. Let me tell you the reason. I'm not going to, uh, you know, I can actually use watch events directly from Stripe. There we go. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to connect my Stripe account right now here. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on developers and I am going to go webhooks. There's option for webhooks in Stripe. So we can use that. And I will click on add an endpoint. So simply let's select again webhook options. We can web use webhooks for all different platforms. Custom webhook and then create a new webhook. Let's call this Stripe checkout. Complete, completed, yeah. Then uh, save it. 
and then I will simply copy the address, copy the webhook URL link. Let's go to Stripe, add the endpoint URL, and then I can select the events which I want, you know, in order to trigger this webhook. So I can simply select checkout, checkout session completed. So this is the one that we want to use, checkout session dot computed, uh, add events, and then click on add endpoints. Nice. Uh, so the endpoint is created. It says waiting for events, which means it is waiting for us to go ahead and make, you know, uh, a checkout session. So let's simply do this test at the rate gmail.com. And you can use this card. You know, it's a dummy card that uh, Stripe provides us to use. So let's do this. There we go. Uh, I don't know why there is an address here. I don't want an address. Let's see. Okay. There you go. And the test payment has been made. Now let's go back to dashboard in Stripe and refresh the page. We must be able to see our completed checkout session right here in the developer's dashboard. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so we can see a uh, event right here, which is checkout.session.completed, exactly what we were looking for. And uh, if I go to make, I need to uh, click on OK and then run this module only. So in order to, I can, so that I can catch it. Uh, by the way, because you can see that I didn't turn it on before, what I can do in Stripe, I don't really have to make the payment again and again. Stripe provides as a really nice option, which is resend. So we can simply resend the same data again and again. So I will click on resend. And uh, there we go. The data has arrived. Let's click on it and we can see all bunch of data. So it, it comes with a lot of things. Uh, yeah, so that was that. And now we want to have an increment function which will increase the value by one every time. So let's do this. We are going to use uh, this tools. We will go to tools and we will select increment function. We will link it right here. And then uh, uh, there we go. That is a uh, reset value is set to never. So it's never going to reset. It's going to remember the value. And then we can also set the value to uh, reset after a cycle or after a whole scenario run. Okay. So yeah, we can do that for cycles. Uh, you might be wondering the definition of cycle and scenario run. I think uh, I will also share a documentation about this, but uh, to understand, you know, a scenario itself can consist of multiple cycles in it. Yeah. And yeah, basically, yeah, that, that is the shortest way I could explain it. Yeah, but we don't have to dive into that right now. What we want is we want to save the numbers. So every time there is a automation made here, we want to save the number and increment it so that, you know, uh, in Webflow, it shows the live digit itself. Let's set it to never and I will click again and then we'll click on Webflow because now we want to update the live item inside Webflow. Let's go here and click on update an item, okay? You might be uh, wondering where is the live option? So you will get, we'll get to that. There is option inside it. And my Webflow account is connected right here. I can simply select my site. By the way, you also get the option for map. So you can have the, you can map the site ID itself. If you don't want to use the names and all, uh, make, make it, make, make it easy for you. <laughs> you can select the name, such a weird name. Uh, and I can simply, Okay, root not found. Let's refresh. Uh, uh, there we go. Collection. Collection is digital products. This is my collection. And then I also want to make this item live. So I will simply select live. Item itself is, I can also map the item, but in this case, let's simply select one because we don't really want to, we don't really have multiple items in there. Live counter. This is the fun and testing part. So we are going to use this number right here. So by using this number, this will, this is going to increment it, right? Every time there is an automation, you might be thinking, Harshit, what if, we, if I want to start the number from maybe 100, 101 or 102, right? So in that case, what you can do, you can add a math function here. So here in make, you get options for math functions. So I hope, let's say it works, let's say uh, 100, I have 100 here, then I will click on plus, which is addition. And then I can select here 
this thing, uh, the result which is coming from the increment function. Uh, let's see if it works. And then the name, we are not going to change the name, so let's keep it Webflow Pro. It is, by the way, mandatory to have a name which I uh, don't like a lot. You know, it, it is also mandatory in ZK, not something to make. So yeah, just put the name. Uh, we don't, we're not going to uh, change the slug and all. Archived is set to no, draft is set to no. And then click on OK. By the way, I can simply click on run this module only. And now you can see that I can do a test run very easy. I can simply uh, type a number here. I don't really have to run the whole scenario again and again. So simply let's type a number called one here and wait for the data. And you can see that it was ran successfully. And the life counter output is set to 101, which is what we wanted exactly. So let's refresh our page. Okay, there we go. It's 101. Nice. Let's go to the live website again. Update item. So save it. This is all good. And then turn on the scenario. I will run. I don't have to click on run once. Okay, I can simply go refresh the page and make a test trans uh, transaction again. Reorder. Let's go here. There we go. Let's set the rate. Com. Again, add my millionaire card. There you go. Now pay. There you go. I did not do anything. You can see it running live uh, when you are, you know, basically watching the diagram. There we go. Test payment has been made. Let's refresh it. There we go. Voila. <sighs> okay. So that is it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and you found it useful. Uh, I personally love Make. I hope I was able to also convince you to start loving Make. You should definitely start using it if you have not tried it yet. You are definitely going to enjoy it and maybe make a switch from Zapier. No it for Zapier, but I just love Make. We are going to drop a link in the description. You can find uh, the link in the description and drop any suggestions for the videos and also any suggestions for the automations. So till then, uh, Harshita Grawal signing off. Bye-bye.